Supraventricular tachycardia is an arrhythmia which occurs above the ventricles. Examples of supraventricular tachycardias include atrial tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, atrioventricular reentry tachycardia, AVRT, and atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia, or AVNRT. AVNRT is the classic supraventricular tachycardia and is a result of abnormal, unsynchronized electrical transmission from the atrioventricular node to the ventricles. The sinoatrial node is a dominant pacemaker cell in the heart which sends impulses to the atrium causing atrial contraction. From there the impulse arrives at the AV node. The AV node conducts the impulse slower before entering the bundle of His, bundle branches and Purkinje fibers where the impulse travels rapidly resulting in ventricular contraction. Atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia, as the name suggests, is tachyarrhythmia caused by a reentry circuit in the atrioventricular node, the AV node. In AVNRT, there are two atrioventricular nodal pathways. Patients can have two atrioventricular nodal pathway and be fine. However, some people have a slow and fast conducting atrioventricular nodal pathway. A fast conducting pathway has rapid conduction but a slow refractory period, whereas a slow conducting pathway has a rapid refractory period coupled with slow conduction. The differences in the slow and fast conducting pathways can trigger uh, AVNRT, the atrioventricular nodal reentry tachycardia. And there are two main types of AVNRT. The slow, fast AVNRT accounts for 90% of AVNRTs. Impulse travels slow along the slow pathway and fast along the fast pathway. The impulse traveling down the fast pathway will eventually excite cells at the bundle of His, but also in the slow pathway as well. The fast impulse will thus cancel out the slow impulse in the process. The next impulse that travels from the sinoatrial node will enter the slow pathway first because the refractory period here is fast and the cells are able to get excited again. Because of this, the impulse traveling down the slow pathway may eventually re-excite fibers along the fast pathway and the bundle of His. The impulse will travel rapidly backwards along the fast pathway, retrograde, to the atrium, and also re-enter the slow pathway again, causing a re-entry circuit that will continue and continue, causing simultaneous ventricular and atrial contractions. In slow, fast AVNRT, there is anterograde conduction by the slow atrioventricular nodal pathway and retrograde conduction by the fast atrioventricular nodal pathway. Then there is also fast, slow AVNRT, which represents approximately 5 to 10% of the AVNRTs. Here, there is anterograde conduction by the fast atrioventricular nodal pathway and retrograde conduction by the slow atrioventricular nodal pathway. Conduction up the fast pathway is very rapid. That retrograde atrial depolarization, which is represented by the P wave in the ECG, is simultaneous or almost simultaneous with the anterograde ventricular uh, activation, represented by the QRS on ECG here. This causes the low amplitude P wave to be obscured in the much higher amplitude QRS complex. Classic ECG findings are no visible P waves. If there are visible uh, P waves, the PR interval is shortened. A narrow QR 
X complex with high amplitude tachycardia a rate of about 150 but it could range from 120 to 220 beats per minute AVNRT usually affects young people a young female for example will present with palpitations palpitations is almost always reported they can be diaphoretic patients uncommonly are hemodynamically unstable People often have a feeling of diuresis, which is due to elevated atrial pressure and release of ANP, which is a hormone that promotes peeing of sodium and water. Neck pulsations occur secondary to simultaneous contraction of the atria and ventricles against the closed mitral and tricuspid valve, and this is called Brugada phenomenon. In terms of management, in an acute setting, anyone who has a tachycardia, a very fast heart rate, and is unstable, will require cardioversion. Synchronized cardioversion picks up the QRS complex and delivers a shock. If not synchronized, it can create a ventricular tachycardia. Cardioversion is followed by a 24-hour infusion of amiodarone. The supraventricular tachycardia will revert back to sinus rhythm. In patients who are stable without hemodynamic compromise, patients can undergo a vagal maneuver. Vagal maneuvers include Valsalva maneuver, which can be done, for example, by asking someone to blow into a syringe. If vagal maneuvers does not work, adenosine can be given. Adenosine temporarily stops the conduction in the atrioventricular node thereby potentially terminating the re-entry circuit in the atrioventricular node. If AVNRT becomes recurrent or does not terminate, radio frequency delivered via catheter ablation can be directed at either the fast or slow pathway. Ablation of the slow pathway is preferred to lower risk of complete heart block. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.